Another way of voicing for two wind instruments in pop style music is to voice them with the third and seventh degree of the chords that they're playing over. And it'll result in an interval of either an open fifth or an open fourth or even a tritone, depending on the quality of the chord. And it's not generally a great sound on its own to just have those two open intervals like that. But it is a stylistic way of writing in popular music genres. So let's explore this. And what's great about it is it works nicely when you're working with chords that move either in the cycle of fifths or when they move chromatically. You can get some nice voice leading that way. For example, on here, I have the trumpet playing the top line and the tenor sax playing the line underneath. But here, I'm playing, let's say, a C for the A minor, which is the third, but that C can stay and be the seventh of D minor. So that works nicely, whereas the tenor sax here is playing the G over here, and then it'll move down to the F to be the third over there. So when you're going through the cycle of fourths or fifths, depending how you look at it, you can move between the third and the seventh from one chord to the next. And chromatic movement is nice because that's kind of stepwise movement as well. So let's listen to this first without any brass. And here I'm using these two lines, and I'm just alternating between some swells with a Sforzando sample and then some slightly shorter notes in the fourth bar where it moves between the two chords a little more quickly. So let's listen to this without the horns just to get a sense of what the chords are like. So I'm going for two bars on each of the chords, and then the last one are one bar each. So let's look and listen to this part. And it's hard to get lines happening when you're voicing in thirds and sevenths. So it's usually long notes to short notes. And in this case, it's long notes. So let's look at these two brass parts here. I got the C on the trumpet, and that repeats there. So there's not a lot of movement in this top trumpet line. It's playing the same note until it gets to the F where it's moving down. And the tenor is moving slightly again, just stepwise. So they're not exciting parts, but they're nice supporting parts. So when you want to have a nice supporting part underneath, maybe you have a busy melody and you only have two brass, this is a nice way of outlining the chords. Now let's look at the next example. Here I'm voicing the brass between the trumpet and tenor sax again. And here I'm using a chord progression of just the B-flat 7. It's the same example we heard in the last video, um, same musical example underneath. But here I'm playing a different type of part where I got the B-flat 7 and I have the 7th on top in the trumpet. And the tenor is playing the D, a tritone lower. So again, it's not a usual interval that you would like to have two horns voiced with. But in this context, it works in this kind of way. So I'm using sustained notes with that, playing the third and seventh. And there's no movement because it's just the one chord. And then I'm alternating it with a little key switch and some short notes just in octaves, A flat, B flat, A flat, B flat, just to break it up so it's not strictly long notes of a tritone. So again, let me just close this up and we'll listen briefly to the musical example without these. And now with the brass. So there you see they're moving between these sustained notes of the A flat and D and then moving to octaves over there. So that's a nice effective way of working with this type of voicing. Now let's look at another example. Here I've got a slower, more ballady type of thing, and I'm using the alto sax and trombone, which is not the most common combination, but I kind of like it. And in this particular case, it works nicely. And I'm using the Session Horns Pro instruments here, and I have a longer chord progression here. I'm going between A minor 7 and then a little stepwise movement up to the C major 7 and then D7, and that repeats twice. And then we're alternating between B minor 7 and E minor 7. So let's listen to that without the brass.
So that's the chord progression. And now let's bring up the two horn instruments. And here we can see what they're playing. We're starting with the seventh over there and the third on the trombone. And that just moves up stepwise. And here we still have the seventh and then the third over here. And then seventh and third again. So let's look and listen. So here I have the alto playing the seventh of the chord the whole way through until we get to this section over here. So here's playing the seventh, and then it's going down to the third for the E minor seven again, the cycle of fourths. And here I'm having the trombone sustain over it, so they're not moving exactly together, which gives a nice, interesting, additional element of inner movement since one note is sustaining and one is changing. It works nicely with three brass and four brass as well, but there's an introduction to that type of writing with two brass. And finally, let's look at one more example. And here I have alto and trumpet, and they're alternating between short notes and swells. And again, let's just listen to the music and look at the chords. It's alternating. It's kind of a disco thing between one and four, D minor seven, G minor seven, and then alternating between A minor seven, G minor seven, and back to D minor. like that. Now let's listen to the whole thing with the two horns. And here they are. I'm starting with the alto sax playing the seventh. And then it's moving to the third for the G minor since it's going through the cycle of fourths. And let's listen. So that's an example of two horns in a more disco type of flavor, again, alternating between thirds and sevenths as they're moving between the cycle of fourths. So that's another way of approaching two horn voicings, and we'll continue with more in the next video.